What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back for what is going to be the 47th and final episode of the Uno X career. It's not a decision I want to make guys but unfortunately this is how it's going to be. Again, I will make a video tomorrow explaining what is going on but for now we are going to be focusing on the yellow jersey and doing our utmost to get it with Skelmo Sir. Of course, we are four minutes off the yellow jersey currently. It's Egan Bernal who holds it with Tade Pagacha, just a minute behind in second place. Skelmo Sir, four minutes down, holds the podium position, and let's be real, that in itself would be a fantastic result for the 22 year old remember. Uh, Bardé is hot on our tail at the moment but hopefully we can hold him off and definitely hold on to third place. If not, let's try and go all in for yellow. Because I think in green, Pagacha and Van Aert look to be running away with it. We do have Magnus Kaur in third place. Jorn Izagiri holds the Polkadot jersey as well. So we're really all in for Skelmosa. So let's take a look at today's stages then, shall we? We start with a mammoth 51 kilometer time trial from Nice to Cannes. And that is where we're probably going to lose a little more time. Uh, sprinter stage on stage 17. Stage 18 is full of mountains. You can see uh, the climbs we have coming up. Stage 19 as well. Uh, not a mountain top finish, but the Col de Pre is going to be the final climb there. And then look at the final couple of stages in the Alps, guys. We have Alp Duez, uh, the penultimate climb on stage 20, just showing how difficult the final climb, the Col de Jandri, is going to be. I mean, 11.6% for an average of 13 kilometers. That's absurd before, of course, we head to Paris and finish on Champs-Élysées. However, of course, let's be positive. We are in a fitness peak. Skelmosa still in tip top form. So hopefully let's stay in touch over the 51K today. I'm worried particularly about Tade Pogaccia rather than Egan Bernal. Let's see how it goes. All right, Captain Price, I hope is going to take the early uh, best time. Let's push him up to 99 towards the finish in Cannes. And he does by two minutes already. And look at the time gaps. I know a small sample size, nine riders, but these are the type of gaps we can expect today. So Skelmosa waits to start. Primoz Roglic is already well into his TC. He's 15th place and 16 minutes down. No one would have predicted that at the start of the race. Vingegaard as well is 14th. What a nightmare Jumbo Visma have had. The real race for the stage is between Pippo Ganna already at the line and Wout van Aert on his way. And as we depart from Nice, I can say it's a very pleasant surprise. It's a plus three day for Skelmosa. We're going to start at 71 and try and really negative split this TT. And really looking at the riders in the top 10, we have Gino Maida, Pino, Higita, Chicone, Emric Mass, Simon Yates, Roman Bardet, and then us. We have no super strong time trialists, of course, bar the man behind us in green, Tade Pagacha. Egan Bernal, I think hopefully we'll gain some time on the yellow jersey today, but Tade, that's a different story. So first checkpoint for Scalemosa, and it's going to be 30 seconds down, that's not too bad. And when we compare it to Tade, who is 13 seconds down, it doesn't look so good. But Bernal, the yellow jersey, is going to be 31 seconds down, so we've gained a second on him so far. So we're now approaching the third checkpoint. Gino made it almost two minutes down there. Pino, Higita, Emric Mass, about two and a half to three minutes Chicone as you would expect on a shocker Yates at two and a half Bardet at two and a half and I think we are starting to catch Roman Bardet let's see how far down we are hopefully around two minutes slightly less than two minutes but Tade has us firmly in his sights he is only 59 seconds back and there is Bardet up the road hopefully though we have left enough energy to really try that negative split in the final kilometers with Poggy um, having us in his sights Bernal is 2 minutes 21 down at the third split, so we're about 25 seconds up at the moment. So hopefully I've been able to illustrate how long and gruelling this time trial has been as we come into the final kilometre scale most up to 90. Let's press it all the way to the line, use all our energy with 2 minutes 49 down in 32nd place, whilst Tade 1 minute 25 down, he finishes 6th 
on the day and we wait for Bernal but I think Pocky is going back into yellow let's see how much we can beat Bernal by if we beat him at all three minutes 27 we gain about 45 seconds well I say we take it we take it for sure Pippo Ganna he'll take it as well he wins the stage by an absolute mile but 30 second place for Skielmosa we gained time on pretty much all of the top 10 bar of course, the man in sixth place, Tadej Pogacar, and now the yellow jersey of the Tour de France once again, 53 seconds ahead of Bernal, whilst we hold fourth place, extending our gap to Bardet. And all right, stage 17, departing from Can today, lots of KOM points on offer early in the stage, but this looks set for a mass sprint. I've kept all of our guys in the breakaway today, only two riders in said breakaway, and Stefan Kung has now been dropped by Benoit Kostner Fra. Not really worth it if you ask me. I know there are a lot of KOM points available, but we're not really in that race and we want to look after Alex Kristoff. And if one thing's for certain at the Tour de France this year, it's crashes and Bardet is falling foul to that right now with Magnus Court as well, uh, but we're back in very comfortably. One jersey that we are definitely in with more of a chance of though is the green jersey, Magnus Court, currently third there. We do have Wout van Aert wearing, donning the jersey today. I'm not sure if he owns it or Tadej Pogaccia owns it, but we're, oh, look at that, four so far back in the group. Try and come to the left, find some space somehow miraculously with Magnus Court Nielsen and we come first of the peloton which now places us still third. So we have 8k to go right now and our train is officially a mess. Hulagard is nowhere so I have Scarset trying to bring up Kristoff on the right hand side. Scarset, his job is now done and here we go. Things are coming together slowly with Hulagard coming up on the right hand side of the road as well. We really need him to get in position. So 5k to go and hopefully this is the moment where our train aligns. Look at that almost perfectly in time literally any later and it would have been too late to compete for the stage and only 3k to go our guys have spent a huge amount of energy trying to stay in position so I can't really see a good sprint coming from our end today we're gonna wait we're gonna wait we're gonna wait a little longer here goes Magnus Court and here comes Alex Kristoff going for the line can we steal a stage Ballerini and Van Aert are here as well we're going to be close you know we're going to be so close so close, but Kristoff is denied by Wout. Oh man, take a look at this replay, guys. I thought Kristoff had it. Oh, that was so close. That's gutting. Getting Kristoff a victory at the Tour de France after he comes to Uno X at the age of 36 would have been a massive moment and really made a great story of this final episode. Sadly, though, we just miss out. And it came out of nowhere. I didn't really think we stood a chance after we spent so much energy too early, but, oh, I'm gutted. All right, what a mammoth that stage this is, guys. Stage 18, 255 kilometers. And we have three HC category climbs, including the Col de Isouard, which is the final climb of the day. We need great form and everything can change right here on this stage. So I've tried really hard to stack the breakaway today. As always in the mountains, we have 12 riders up the road, including Rigo, Ran, Alaphilippe, and Nairoman Quintana. We have one minute 20 back to the peloton. It's probably too late to get anyone else up the road. So that is the day's breakaway, and Scalemosa has a plus three day on what could be the biggest stage of the race so far. Stage continues to tip by then with only four and a half minutes for the breakaway and it seems UE team Emirates not only have their eyes on retaining yellow, they also have their eyes on winning the stage. Okay, we're halfway up the Col de Saint-Père at the front of the race. We have Magnus Court, who is being helped by Jonas Widerberg, but not for much longer. He is about to go pop, and Magnus Court himself is struggling as well with the tempo on this climb. To be honest, despite the plus four day back in the peloton, not too much action, not any action so far. Yeah, to be honest, I hoped Magnus Court would be a little stronger in the mountains today, outclined by Swifts and everyone else from the breakaway bar, I think Kenny Ellison, who was also dropped with the likes of Jonas Widerberg. Scar sets and Captain Price, they're now gone as well. And Skelmosa has Train, Hulagard and Kristoff, who will hopefully help him out a little bit. And of course, part of the strategy of today's breakaway was gaining some green jersey points with Magnus Court, but he's only going to come, I think, ninth place. So only minor points available to him. He's almost caught 
about three minutes away from the peloton. Okay, we're now seeing a major acceleration. It's the Ineos Grenadiers coming to the front and Pippo Ganna, look at him turning that huge gear and maybe Bernal is feeling great today. Now we're down to 52 riders in the peloton scale mode. So just trying to conserve energy whilst we have the Enios train on the front sitting somewhere towards the back of the group. It's not an issue. I don't really see any attacks coming too soon at least. And if I wanted to be uber aggressive, this is where I would attack. Now UEE on the front, they have Comrade and Almeida. I don't see too many uh, other riders for the Enios Grenadiers. Gagan Hart is here, Caruso as well. Could I press on right now? I mean, to be honest, it would be a very brave move considering the percentages we still have to cover today. So I concluded that right now, our best move is simply to conserve energy in the group as much as we can. Just 31 riders crest the climb together, guys. Magnus Core even is now gone and we're without Mountain Domestiques again. It's been a weakness for us at this race. Oh, and a crash, it's Joao Almeida who's gone down for UEE. Or oh, it could have been another rider for their team, but now they are severely weakened with Comrades and only Pagatra, I think, in this group. And at the front of the race, by the way, it's Alaphilippe, Rigoberto Aran, and Nairo Quintana battling it out for the stage. So the Iswad averages 7.1% over 14 kilometers, and some of the steepest percentages are right to the top of the climb. And right now, again, we're right at the back of the group, just clinging on to the tempo set by Teo Gegenhart. Now he's stopped. Hopefully, we can move up. But but we're blocked in and Thibaut Pino attacks for France and Roman Bardet, who is the rider we need to watch, of course, attacks too. But no one able to get away. Danny Martinez now to the front for the Ineos Grenadiers and it's really hotting up now. Okay, again, Bardet attacks and Bernal tries to follow now in the Colombian jersey. Pagacha has to chase him down himself. We're still in the group with 4k to go in the Iswad. So now Bardet is caught again. Caruso comes to the front. Now would be a great time to counter-attack if I had enough left to try something. Tade Pogaccia certainly does though and that means we need to get moving. Only 3k to go in the climb and the guys Pogaccia and Bernal are just going away from us. And I mean actually Pogaccia is not only going away from us, he's gone away from Egan Bernal as well. Let's set up, try and conserve a little bit before the final few kilometers of the climb. So Tade Pogaccia has actually now caught the front of the race. So Ryan Quintana and Alaphilippe still together. Gino Maida having a fantastic third week and Bernal trying to catch Pogaccia as well. We are just behind the group of Roglic, Higita and Bardet. So we're now snaking down the descent of the Iswa. We need to catch Bardet. We need to catch Bernal and we definitely need to catch Pogaccia. Not too many gaps on show at the moment. Hopefully we can close the gap to Roglic and really uh, make sure there's no massive time gaps today. Now at the front, Gino Maida has caught the group of Pogaccia. Only 15 seconds back to Bernal. We needed to follow that move with Roman Bardet and we still need to consider the final ascent with our energy. Oh, look at this! What a moment. That is perfect. Oh my word. No collaboration at the front of the race. And we have caught Pagacha. Everything is back together. And so Roman Bardet attacking into Briançon. We do have a very, very difficult final kilometre coming up though. So we need to make sure we have the legs for that. I hope and think we do right now. Let's up it to 85. Come right to the front of the race. Up to 99. Onto the cobblestones. Can we maybe move up? But we're blocked in a little by Egan Bernal not the best positioning and Roman Bardet is escaping us on the final kilometre. Let's kick if we can all the way to the line but Roman Bardet has been aggressive today and I think he's going to win in Briançon. What a win for Roman Bardet. Pogaccia will be third and we are going to lose so much time. How did we lose all that time right at the end there? And we're going to be just outside the top five. A frustrating finish, but we have to look at it positively. We could have been a lot worse off had uh, the front group cooperated at the end there, which means we do hold on to our third place despite Roman Bardet winning the stage. Okay, though, another chance today. We have two more mythical climbs, including the Col de Pre, and it's another downhill finish. Doesn't really suit us, but let's see if we can make a move. So it's been another fight to get in today's breakaway and of course more climbers up the road, the likes of Lopez, Quintana, here again with Yone Zagiri, the polka dot jersey this time. I've managed to get Hulugard and Train up the road with Alex Kristoff to work Skelmosa on a lovely plus four day. Okay, the Cola de Bissa is next and we just had Jumbo Visma really hammer it 
on the second cat climb just beforehand. They mean business today. I'm not sure what they have planned. I'm sure it's going to be a massive attack though. So on the absolutely stunning road still of the Col de Bissan and Tobias Foss has come to the front for Jumbo Visma. I'm not sure what they have planned. It's going to be big. I'm sure of it. I'm not sure if Wout van Aert, who is uh, I think their GC guy in 10th place, is on the attack or Roglic or something. Uh, I don't think they've got any riders in the breakaway either. Can't lie with you guys. I would have loved to have attacked on this climb and tried to have taken a lead into the final ascent. We're simply not going to be able to do it. Uh, the tempo was too quick throughout this climb in the Pelson and uh, we just need to try and conserve and keep Hulagard and train here. So 7k to go, 6.5k to go. Is where Scalmosa is going to be alone on this one. About 40 riders still in the group. No major attacks have taken place uh, from the group either as Wout van Aert sits at the front and the breakaway are doomed today I feel. And there we go. There's the move. It's Primoz Roglic attacking with 5k to go until at the top of the Col de Pre and we're struggling guys we simply don't have the energy to attack the best riders in the world right now so right now Roman Bardet has decided to join Primoz Roglic at the front of the race can I follow we have 2k to go I'm trying to push through perhaps to set off after Bardet who has now been dropped by Roglic but that is proving tough as Bernal and Pogaccia make their move and following them is simply going to be impossible I feel 1.8k to go until the top so we'll press on as much as we can but we have been dropped by Egan and Bardet Roglic and Pogaccia are up front although still not caught on Madawas and Yone Zagiri. but again we are going to be of advantage because they look at each other and no gaps have been made. To be honest, we may as well go 99 until the line here because up the road, Quintana, Jonas Giri and Madaras, they're going to pick up the stage anyway. Let's try and attack the descent and see what we can do. Can we do this all the way to the line? I hope so because we are building a 30 second buffer to the guys behind. Only 2k to go for us, but Valentin Madaras is going to win stage 19 of the Tour de France. We try and sprint all the way to the line and somehow we have turned this into a great day for us in the GC gaining about 30 seconds on the yellow jersey group and every other GC contender. How we've done it, I don't know, but we time our attack in the descents to perfection. Valentin Madaras wins at the Tour. What a win for him ahead of Jonas Giri and Nairo Quintana out climbing those guys. Uh, very impressive, it must be said. We somehow benefit from looking around in the GC group and we extend our buffer to Bardet in that final podium position. And let's be real, like I said, a podium at the Tour is such a great result. I feel like because this is going to be the final episode, I want to aim for the yellow jersey. It seems unrealistic at this stage. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that it will be unrealistic because... Four minutes and two seconds to Tade. There's almost no way we can gain that in one mountain stage. But we're going to attack and we're going to give it our best shot, guys. But the opportunity is here because we have the Col de la Madeleine, the Col de Glador, the Alpe d'Huez, and then the Col de Gendry. Just a plethora of huge climbs, 200 kilometers. Could we attack early before the final climb? We could. Would it be brave? It would be, would it be stupid? Possibly, but maybe that's what we're going to do today. All right, away we go then. Scalmeister gets a pretty nice plus three. It's not the plus five we dreamed of. And what is crazy about this stage is that the Col de Madeleine, uh, the Col de Gladon, and Alpe d'Huez are absolutely dwarfed by the Col de Gendry. Look at that final ascent. It is just absurd we need to try and get in the breakaway today uh, so let's maybe try and follow some attacks so status ahead of the Col de la Madeleine only Magnus Court Nielsen for us in the breakaway I'm hoping to get some more riders up there as soon as the climb begins okay then I've attacked with Marcus Hulagard hopefully he will be able to join at the breakaway with minimal issues we have Magnus Court, Naira Quintana, Aran, Yonez Aguirre, Warren Bargill and Valentin Madawas, plenty of very good climbers, as you would expect, up the roads. Now, a tactic that I would absolutely love to employ is attacking right here on uh, the Col de la Madeleine, the first climb of the day, but I know we don't have the mountain squad for that. We can't blow up the race as we would like, and um, we'll move back in the group, actually, a little bit. But, uh, yeah, UAE and Ineos, they just have so many strong domestiques, it's not really worth attacking them. When Ineos have the likes of Caruso, Gegenhardt, Quieto, Martinez, and Sivakov 
as pure domestiques. Uh, the same goes for UE, of course. Is it really worth trying? And sadly, we're not quite going to be able to hold on to the front of the race in the breakaway. We'll keep Quartz and Hulagard together. They can work together over the course of the day. However, we are a massive 10 minutes ahead of the Peloton. They are the perfect satellite riders today. All right then, the situation at the front of the race is Jorn Izagere and Nairo Quintana are battling. It's out for the polka dot jersey. You have to go some way up the mountain to find our duo Quartz and Hulagard waiting, of course, to drop back later on and look how much of an advantage they have. We've lost Captain Price. That's okay though. We certainly weren't trusting him today. And so UE Team Emirates really trying to turn it on on the Col de Gladon. We only have 78 riders now and all the time riders are dropping out of the peloton. Torsten Train, the only domestique left for Scalmosa. Bar, of course, Hulogard and Court who wait up the roads. And so with that, the Col de Gladon is over and only 38 riders are left. Scalmosa is alone for now, but we do have Magnus Court slowly dropping back to him in this descent. Hulogard has decided to press on. We want someone up the road at all times, if possible, but also someone helping out Scalmosa. And let me tell you, Tade Pogaccio wants this stage. He's using up Guerrero and Almeida in this valley to try and reduce the cap to the front of the race. Currently, it's Quintana, Izagiri, Hindley, and Maduas at the front. But still, eight and a half minutes, to be fair. But now that Ineos Grenadiers come to turn it on, Bernal, of course, only a minute down. Could he make that up today? And Hulagard is about to be caught. Almost perfect timing with Magnus Court helping us out for the moment. I wonder how many riders are going to be here at the top of Alpe d'Huez. But we're just holding on to the back at the moment and sadly we've used Court and it looks like we may use Hulagard as well by the top of Alpe d'Huez. It's not ideal to have no domestiques left with the massive Col de Jandri still coming up. And oh my, Roman Bardet is dropping. Roman Bardet, fourth place in the GC, is dropping on Alpe d'Huez here. He's throwing away his chances of a podium at the Tour de France and that is surely all but going to secure our place on the podium ourselves. What has happened to poor Romain Bardet? Only 21 riders are left here. The tempo continues to be pressed by the Ineos Grenadiers. Egan Bernal must be feeling good today. He knows he has to try and attack here if he wants a chance of winning the Tour de France. This stage is crazy. I'd love to attack, of course, before the Col de Jandri, but we're not going to beat Pog. And we're not going to beat Bernal. I think that much is for certain. But a podium with poor Roman Bardet. He's going to maybe drop out of the top 10. Certainly the top 5 with him dropping already prior to a massive, massive climb. So entering the final ascent of this year's Tour de France. It's 6 minutes to the front of the race. Quintana, Izagiri and Madouas have been the strongest riders today. They're the only riders at the front. We still have a couple in between us and them. But um, really... It could be quite close between the breakaway and the peloton with Pocky still here and Bernal, of course. Here it is then, 23 kilometres of absolute torture with the final 13k averaging 11.6%. We need to take it steady to start. This could absolutely blow apart this race and probably will. Okay, 18k to go. Emmanuel Bookman comes to the front, I guess, for Sergio Higuita. He is 7th place in the GC, to be fair. Having a good race, we're just trying to hold on without spending any energy until we get to the second half of the climb, really. And here we go, here we go. Emmanuel Bookman pulls over and Sergio Higuita is the first man to attack. We still have plenty of domestiques. Jack Haig working for Gino Maida as well as the Ineos and Jumbo Visma crew. Uh, we have four Jumbo Visma riders here with Sepkus as well. So um, I'm not sure it's worth an attack right now, to be honest. And there we go. Gino Maida tries to join Sergio Higuita at the front. We have a very, very brief break in the percentages. Look at the beautiful surroundings we're in, but still 13k to the top. And now Thibaut Pino is struggling. It's a good sign for us. Can we maybe get to the front of the group? We're on the graveled section and we're blocked in a little. There goes Egan. There goes Egan. Of course, Tade's still right in front of us. And okay, Egan maybe not quite having the legs he thought he had there. And look at these tactics by Bora Hagita catching up with Jai Hindley. Perfect stuff right there at the front of the race. It's Nairo Man at Quintana trying to win the stage. But here we go. The major attacks are now taking place. Can we find a way through? Because it's Bernal going for yellow. Roglic and Pogaccia. Roglic can't follow. And Poggy has to close the gap. For us, we've got our third place secured. Look at this. The race is completely blown apart. We'll make our way up. 
at perhaps around 68. And who can win the yellow jersey? Because now Poggy is counter-attacking Egan Bernal. And can he hold the wheel? What a spectacular setting to conclude the Tour de France, guys. Absolutely stunning, it must be said. Can Nairo Quintana hold off Poggy and Bernal as we try to make our way back to them? We're doing a good climb, to be fair. And there it is then. Bernal is dropped. Tagita having a fine climb today. Nairo Quintana has been caught. And Tade Pogaccia on his way to a stage win to conclude his battle for yellow. What a rider, what a setting. Tade Pogaccia wins atop the Cola de Jandri. It's no surprise. He beats Bernal by almost two minutes to secure the yellow jersey. Gino Maida and Sergio Higuita finish very strongly. Indeed, so does Roglic, finding his legs a little too late though. Our South will, I just think, uh, make the top 10 on the day. And I think secure our place on the podium. We did the best we could. We couldn't get near the front, but I think we're gonna end up on the final podium, guys. And sadly, we're gonna have so many riders miss the time cut today. And as Scar sets um, one for us, plenty more as well as sadly captain price won't be making it to paris what a shame oh man what a stage we finished five minutes almost behind tade in the end the cold of jandry was just absurd just almost too difficult i would say to have a proper bike race up it but tade pagacha wins almost two minutes clear of bernal and he secures the yellow jersey gino maida and sergio higita finish very strongly but Matthias Skelmose Jensen is going to finish on the Tour de France podium. And for that, we can only be delighted. Romain Boise drops from fourth place to ninth on the day. And let's take a look at how much time he lost. He lost 14 minutes to Tade. What a shame for Romain, but we capitalise on his misfortune. In green, Tade is winning that competition, but can Wout van Aert steal it on Champs-Élysées? I get the feeling he might do, whilst Jon Izaguirre is going to win the polka dot jersey. The final stage finishes in Paris Champs-Élysées, the most prestigious sprint in all of cycling today. Let's go for the win, and we're going to wrap up the series, hopefully, with victory for Alexander Kristoff. Let's go. Entering Paris, as we see the Eiffel Tower to our right, we do have a crash. Those guys should be okay. But the final breakaway of the Tour de France, Frank Bonnemore or Christian Eiking and Benoit Cosnefra. And so we have 11 K to go and our train is ready. Videberg, Magnus Court with Hulagard on a great plus five day. He has been in supreme form to conclude the Tour de France this year. Uh, he will be leading out Alex Christoph, who likewise is in great form. Let's try and finish off with a victory, guys. So under the bridge, it's Jonas Widerberg. We need to kick out of this bridge just a little bit to make sure we keep our position at the front of the race. Not trying to spend too much energy on our main riders, though, as Widerberg is about to pull over. It's a great turn from him. Magnus caught only on a minus day. We have Tunison, Matthews to our left-hand side. Can't see any of the real stage protagonists just yet though and only 2.5k to go we can launch up to 99 with Magnus Court Nielsen Hulgar getting blocked in a little we're gonna have to launch a little early as Christoph under the Flamme Rouge goes for the line can we win on Champs Elysees we're blocked off a little bit and I don't think it's gonna be our day is it we're gonna be second place to Davide Ballerini unlucky I think if we were positioned a little better would have taken it, but we're second again with Christophe. And there we have it, the Tour de France is over. The Tour de France is over. Davide Ballerini takes the final win of the race and the series with Christophe in a very good second place. Again, it's a case of what could have been. I don't think Christophe got his stage victory at the Tour this year. Um, a lot of missed opportunities for him. Let's take a look at his results in a little bit closer detail. He really came to form in the final week, two second places, narrowly missing out on a stage victory. But the race for us was really about the GC and Matthias Skelmose Jensen finishing on the podium, joining two of the best riders in the world in Tade and Egan. So what a race overall. We couldn't really get close to them, but we were by far the best of the rest. And that is something to be proud of for sure. In green, Wout van Aert did take the jersey in the end. We had two riders though in the top five, whereas Jon Izaguirre just about held off Nairo Man for the polka dot jersey. And so guys, I'm so gutted to tell you that is the conclusion to this series. That is the end of the UNOX career. 
and this could be the final PCM video on the channel for a long time, I'm afraid, because we have an update coming and I will tell you all about it in a video tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. It's a very exciting time, but um, unfortunately it means this series must now come to an end. But I must say a massive, massive thank you from the bottom of my heart. All of you guys have made this series so so enjoyable for me. It's been so fun to make, I've enjoyed playing it, but the interaction with you guys, uploading the videos, talking with you about the series and having different people from across the world really emotionally invested and talking about the videos and the save has just been so great and it's been my pleasure to bring you this series guys. So again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for making this series what it was. I mean, we've had so many highlights, I can't really look back on them all right now. There's been so many, there's 47 videos of highlights from our humble beginnings as a Pro Conti team. We're still a Pro Conti team, of course, but on track, I would hope to make it to the World Tour at some stage in the near future. But anyway, again, that is all for today and for the series. Let me know in the comments your favourite moment because I can't pick one myself. I've had so many. It's been such a great series overall. Um, many, many enjoyable races. So let me know your personal favourite in the comments below. And again, I appreciate you all. Thank you for making this series what it was. I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers, guys.